today we're gonna talk about lighthouses! So this lighthouse is called the Duluth North Pier Lighthouse and it was built over a hundred years ago at about 1910 and it's on top of what they call a water break that helps the ships come into the harbor really really safe. So this is what the water break looks like and it's just stopping the waves from coming in so that ships can come through here all the way down into the harbor where it's nice and safe. So this is where the lighthouse keeper would come in uh, to light it. Wow, look how tall it is. And this lighthouse is on the south water break and it was put up in the 1870s, which is 150 years ago. Wow, this one's really pretty. Oh, and there's a little lighthouse right there that's probably showing the boats how to come out of the harbor. And that bridge is to help big boats come through. When the really big ones come into the harbor, that lower part that the cars are driving on lifts all the way up to the top so that the boats can come through. And then the bridge will lower back down so that the cars can keep driving across. In John 8, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And that got me thinking about lighthouses. Lighthouses have three main purposes. And the first one is to show the way into the harbor. They show the boats how to get through the water breaks and how to come into the nice safe harbor here where they can be safe and come home and rest. <laughs> and Jesus shows us the way to God and how to have eternal life with him and how to come home to him. Isn't that good? The second way is to navigate. We can find lighthouses on the sides of cliffs or by big rocks or by the shore and they help tell the captains of those ships which way to go. And that the third thing is that they warn where there are dangers. Some of those cliffs or rocks can be really dangerous for boats. And then the lighthouses will tell them to stay away and let them know where there are dangers. And Jesus does that as well. He tells us how to live life and he'll help us to know where to go. And then he warns us about the dangers of life too. Like pride and trying to do things all on our own without God. Or like some of the lies that the enemy tries to tell us. He warns us about those. Okay you guys, this was an awesome lighthouse to check out, but let's go see more. You guys, today I am so excited because Pineapple and I are going to tell you a story. Ooh, I don't actually know what kind of story it is, but Pineapple does and I'll be trying. Okay, Pineapple, what's our story called? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ooh. <gasps> really? Wow. Uh-huh. Okay. It's called Shine. And it's about a firefly. Not a fly made out of fire, but the kind that glow in the dark. I'm going to make the cover. Alright, there's our firefly. And... He's... Scared of the dark! Oh! Bye! Pineapple! I can't wait to find out what happens next! Pineapple, what happened first? 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Whoa! There was once a firefly, and he really loved the light, but he didn't like the darkness at all. In fact, he never went into the dark at all! He was scared of the scary stuff that might be hiding there. <gasps> so, he stayed by the light, nice and happy. Oh, <gasps> really? Whoa, Pineapple just told me that Brother Firefly had a secret. He'd never shined before. He didn't know if he could do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and his sister shined all the time. She loved the dark because she helped others play games in the dark. And they thought she was awesome. So Brother Firefly was getting lonely while well, he was watching his sister play lots of games with the others and shine bright. shining bright and he's just all alone oh really oh I guess the bugs were playing ball and then the ball got kicked out and landed in the mud and because sister was the only one that shined bright she said she'd go get the ball but then she got stuck in the mud She didn't know how to get out. Oh, and then Sister Firefly started hearing a rabbit. Oh, it was a frog. Oh, she was getting worried. What was she gonna do? What was Brother Firefly gonna do? And there was another rabbit. Oh, the frog was getting closer to sister. He could just sit back and watch his own sister get eaten. So even though he was afraid of the dark, and even though he had never shied before, he flew over to his sister, grabbed her, and started pulling with all of his might. Ah! Oh, 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 they saw the frog jump. Ah, and then... Then he started to shine! He was pulling so hard that something just popped! And it was so bright that it blinded the frog as he was leaping for them! Yay! The frog just jumped right into the mud! Now the frog was stuck in the mud while brother and sister were both shining bright! Yay! <gasps> Oh, Pineapple, I love that story. Brother Firefly was very courageous because he could have gotten eaten. But he shined bright when he loved his sister and risked his life to free her. <gasps> He's so brave. And that's what shining is all about. Loving others. Oh, Pineapple, thank you for that story. I loved it. So we came out to see the Wisconsin Point Lighthouse and it was built in the 1920s. One amazing thing about this lighthouse 
is that it's got a sandbar that is 10 miles long, which is the longest sandbar in the world, which makes it one of the safest harbors in the world. So where all the ships come in to stop at the end of their trip or to take off all the cargo that they were carrying, it's one of the safest spots in the entire world because of this long lawn sandbar that protects the water in the harbor. So if any storms come that are off the big lake, the harbor doesn't get affected that much. The water in there where the ships stay is nice and calm. So the Wisconsin Point Lighthouse is way out there. You can just barely see it. Here, I'll try and zoom in on my iPhone. Okay, this is what it looks like on the iPhone. And let's zoom. Oh no, let's keep zooming. Oh, there it is, way out there. Let's zoom. Okay, and that's as far as the iPhone will go. That is so far away. So I got out the big camera. <laughs> so I am hoping with this guy to be able to get a good shot of it. So let's check that lighthouse out. It's about 70 feet tall. It's a really tall one. So I'm hoping that it will show up on here. Wow, that was a really, really pretty one, but so far. Okay, let's check out one that is huge and on the top of a cliff. It's called Split Rock Lighthouse, and it's one of the prettiest one in the entire country. Hi guys! <laughs> so, Tilly and I are outside, and we're gonna write with light. We're gonna make light photos. It's gonna be awesome! Yeah. And Tilly, do you want to do you want to show them what we got? We yeah. just went to Party City and we got some stuff to ride with light. We got glowing dog sticks. Yeah, what color is that? We got pink. Yeah, and we got sparklers. We could only find special star ones. It was a little bit hard to find sparklers. Yeah. And what else did we get? We got uh oh, sparkler candles. <laughs> and I think that's it. Um. We have one more sparkler in there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, so we're going to go out to the lake and we're going to go and try and get photographs that we're going to ride with light. Let's go do it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Till you got your sparkler? Yeah. All right. And you guys, we've got a bucket with water. So that Tilly can throw her sparkler in the bucket with water afterwards, okay? Now, Tilly, I'm going to light the sparkler and it's going to go... Okay? And then when it does that, I'm going to be taking photographs of you. But you can write with it. So, like, make a heart shape in the, in the sky. Like this? Uh-huh. Or star shapes and stuff. I'll like tell you this. when I'm taking the photos. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you when I'm taking the photos and and then we're gonna check out the photos and they're gonna come out to different shapes. Awesome. Or you can just go like circles and stuff like that, okay? Awesome. Okay, you guys, we're gonna light this up and try it out. Are you ready? Okay, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, now Tilly, hold it at the very end. I'm tr trying to get as back as away I can. Okay, and it's gonna sparkle, but it's gonna be okay. Now, once it gets to the end, or if you feel like it's getting too close to you, just drop it in this bucket of water, okay? And it'll stop? Uh, yeah, it'll just go out right away in the water. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna take a little break. I'm gonna um, use both of my hands and we'll get this guy lit up. Tilly, what a great photo! <laughs> Oh, I love it! What what kind of shape did you make? I made the heart, see? And you did it perfectly! Wow, that turned out so well! <laughs> so you guys, the glow stick and our sparkle candles didn't work because it's yeah. so windy and uh -huh. I grabbed the wrong thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> but we got an awesome sparkle photo of Tilly making a... A heart! Yeah! And did you know what? Jesus said that he is the... Light! 
light of the world. Because without Jesus, our hearts, they're like wandering around in the darkness. They don't know where to go. They don't know how to get to God. But Jesus is the light. When we invite Jesus into our darkness, he shows us the way to God, right? Yeah. And the way to eternal life with him. And Tilly, who lives inside your heart? Jesus! Yeah! And that makes us lights of the world. <laughs> and the Bible says that we're lights and says that we shine when we do God's good works. And we show people the way to God as well. So you guys, the heart that Tilly did is a symbol of God's love. And when we love others like Jesus loves others, when we love people in the world like Jesus loves people in the world, that's how we shine God's light. And that's how we show God's heart. And that's how we show people how to come to God. We're loving others and loving each other and loving God so well. And people see that and they go, oh, that's light. Oh, that's the way to get to God. Like that. Does that make sense to me? Yeah. <laughs> and so that's one of the ways that you are the light of the world. So that's how we shine bright for God. Let's go and see another lighthouse. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This lighthouse is called Split Rock and it's huge. It's built on a cliff that's 133 feet above Lake Superior. And it's one of the prettiest lighthouses in America. In 1905, there were 29 ships lost to Lake Superior in winter storms. And five years after that, in 1910, they put the lighthouse up. That makes this lighthouse over 100 years old. Wow! And it's a beauty. Let's take a better look. Here is the fog house. And look at those horns. <laughs> they blast a signal that you could hear five miles out into the lake. Wow. Wow, so all the boats out there would hear it. And here you can see the cliff that the lighthouse is built on. The rocks and cliffs all around the lighthouse are so beautiful. It was breathtaking. But you could see why it would be dangerous for ships during the storms. On Lake Superior and the Great Lakes, we can get really bad storms around the winter. And 115 years ago, the ships were pushing how close they were getting to winter. They knew that they shouldn't be out there when the storms could come. But they were trying really hard to go in and out right up to the edge of winter because they knew that they could make a lot more money that way. But on November 28th in 1905, there was a really bad storm. It had winds of over 60 miles an hour with waves that were over 30 feet tall. That's five times taller than most grown men. Think about five times taller than your dad. Wow, those waves would be just crashing right over a lot of those ships. In that storm, about 29 ships were damaged or lost on the Great Lakes. And nine of those ships were wrecked along the North Shore from Duluth and up. One of the ships broke into two and sank about two miles north of where they were building Split Rock Lighthouse. 
It was after that storm that they decided that they needed to start planning and building the lighthouse right away. Now, historians estimate that since 1816, when the first shipwreck was ever recorded, that about 350 ships have been wrecked in Lake Superior. It's such a beautiful lake, but a part of that beauty is all the cliffs and all the rocks, and that can also make it really dangerous. It can be really dangerous for a ship to be out in a storm, especially in the dark, when it can't see where it's going. It's not sure which way to take or how to get to the harbor or how to get out safely. And that's why so many of the shipwrecks have happened. Split Rock Lighthouse was so beautiful and check it out. It's right there. <laughs> it's so pretty. Wow, when they built it, there were no roads up here. And so they had to take pieces in by boats and haul it up with cranes. Isn't that interesting? Oh, you guys, it's so beautiful here. I could just spend all day here. I just love it. Wow. Weren't all of those lighthouses amazing? I thought we'd see three, but we saw one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Including the little lighthouse by the bridge. Five lighthouses. Wow, they're just everywhere in Duluth. But they're really important here because the shore is so rocky and there are cliffs all over. And it's really important for boats to know where to come, where to get safe. And it's really important for them to know where the cliffs are and all the rocks so that they don't crash. And they decided that they needed light. They needed to see where all the dangers were and how to get into the harbor safely and how to navigate. And you guys, that's what Jesus does for us. He helps us navigate our lives. The Bible is full of his teachings and he helps us to know how to live with a life full of love. Now it's easy to say just live full of love, but the world thinks that love looks like one thing and God tells us that the Bible looks like another thing. A lot of people have a lot of different ideas about what love looks like. And it's really important that we go to Jesus to know what love looks like, to know how we should really be living. And he tells us in his word, and he also tells us through parents and leaders or through speaking to our hearts or in many different ways. Uh, things that could come and trip us up, that could keep us from him and help show us which way to go to get to the harbor. Jesus wants you home so much with him. God just loves you and he wants you to be with him for all of eternity. But we can't do it on our own. We can't find the way on our own. We need the light of Jesus to come home to him, to be with God for all of eternity, to experience his love and his goodness like he wants us to. Oh, it's so good. And all we have to do is see his light and accept him and say, yes, Jesus, I'm gonna live the way that you've shown me to. I'm gonna trust in you as my salvation that you're the way that I come home. It's so good. <laughs> Let's pray really quickly. Jesus, Thank you so much for being my light. <laughs> Thank you for showing me the way to live, to experience you and love. And thank you for being my salvation, for showing me the way to have eternal life with you, with Father God, for forever. <laughs> Amen. Oh, whoa, it's really light now. I love it. Oh, just soaking in that sun. <laughs> Jesus wants every single person to experience his goodness, his love, and his light for all of eternity. It's so good. He loves you so much. And all we have to do is say, yes, Jesus. Receive him, receive his light, and hear the way that he teaches us to live and receive him as our salvation. He's our safe place and he shows us how to come home to be with him. Thanks for joining me. It was a blast checking out lighthouses around the Duluth and North Shore area. <laughs> oh, until next time, have fun discovering more of God's goodness and love this week. See you soon. Bye.